y'all. My name is Aria. I'm a product manager at Microsoft focusing on commercial AI and Windows updates. And today I'm excited to be here to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, untangling this thing called AI. As you likely know, AI is all over the place these days, everywhere from probably every conversation with your boss to even commercials that you see during the Super Bowl. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about all of the different things that Microsoft offers in terms of AI and how you can better understand how you can use them for your own company. Specifically, we're going to talk you through security and compliance, data privacy and management, leveraging AI for your own applications, tools for developers, tools for end user productivity, and a summary so that you've got a cheat sheet when you're going forward of what you need to know for integrating AI into your business. First, at the heart of everything we do at Microsoft is security and compliance. No matter which of our AI platforms, tools, or different features that we build, we are focused on starting with robust security to keep your data and your organization protected. This ensures we're doing things such as meeting industry standards, that we're building ethical AI, and that we're ensuring the new devices and silicon that we build enable you to stay even better protected than other previous Windows devices. So please know, regardless of which of our AI solutions you look at adopting, that they're being built with security and compliance at the forefront. The other key thing you should know about AI is that it all runs on data. And so how you as an organization manage your data is critical to ensuring that you're successfully able to build on AI or even leverage the AI features that we provide. A great example of this is M365 Copilot. I personally love using M365 Copilot to help me find different documents or figure out where I heard from an employee what this actually does. And so for me, I often will go to the Copilot search and say something like, find a document that Paul shared with me about this topic or find a document about this thing. And I see a whole bunch of documents returned. Now, if you don't have your data privacy or management settings correctly configured, you might have a situation where an employee who shouldn't have access to certain data or certain information suddenly has access. This is where things like sensitivity labels and properly configuring data governance with tools like Microsoft Purview is extremely important. You want to ensure only employees within your organization who should have access to certain data have access to certain data. And while this is true, no matter what, it becomes even more important as you start leveraging these different AI toolings that enable users faster access to different files. Another thing is to ensure that your platform, if you're building AI tools, is set up correctly to ensure that you have a good way of reasoning on and managing different data no matter where it resides within your organization. Microsoft Fabric is a great way that you can actually organize all of this data into a single location and make it very accessible and usable. These are two of Microsoft's tools to enable you to actually ensure you're doing seamless data governance and management. Regardless of what tooling you use, it is really important to ensure that documents are being properly protected and shared only with users who should have access. Now, with security and data management at the forefront, let's get a little bit into how you can actually build your own applications or leverage existing applications that we've built for you. When we talk about building your own applications that leverage AI, we really kind of think about it all the way from the edge and client devices to the cloud and running things in the server and really everything in between. When we look at running models on the client, we think about things like Windows Copilot runtime or Onyx Runtime, which enable you to use the Neural Processing Units, or NPU, which is available on Copilot Plus PCs and select other devices to actually run these models locally without eating into any of the performance in your CPU or your GPU. As a reminder, an NPU is basically a chip that's specifically designed to run AI models locally on the device. Additionally, with Onyx Runtime, you can bring your own models to run on the NPU and leverage really the client to do a lot of this heavy processing. This is great for things that require very low latency or that need real-time context. 
for larger, more sophisticated AI tasks. You can actually run models in the cloud. Azure AI Foundry is an AI application server, which is built just for this. It's a great way for you if you're developing applications that are starting with really complex or large language models or things that need a huge amount of compute to be able to run them in the cloud. And even better, you can combine the two. And this is where I think a lot of our AI in the future is going to be headed. It's going to be more of a hybrid situation where we are doing some things on the client and some things on the cloud to really leverage both the ability to have things run with low latency and with really good user context, as well as the larger processing power that you get in the cloud. And so regardless of what kind of applications you're looking to build, I highly recommend checking out both how you can run them locally and in the cloud, whether with WCR, Onyx Runtime, or Azure Foundry. Now, as you're developing these AI applications, you can always consider that you should be using GitHub Copilot. We've actually been experiencing a lot with this internally in our own dev team to figure out how we can actually code faster or how we can actually improve our day-to-day -day productivity by leveraging different tooling out there for coding faster. Only one of which is GitHub Copilot. There's actually quite a few others as well. And it's really interesting. You can actually get things like code completion, function suggestions, error reduction, learning aid, and documentation. And it's really focused on coding. So it's very specific to how you actually would do a coding editor versus certain other tools, which might be more focused towards how should we improve your grammar? How should we further improve the sentiment that your message sends off? And so it's something that's really nice, especially for newer coders or coders who are trying to just check their code and get error analysis to really get into it and understand quickly how to actually improve a certain set of code that you're developing. And so if you're a developer, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, and if you're not, highly recommend that you're sharing it with your developers. For folks who are really focused on IT admin management, which I think is a large portion of the people watching this, one of the things I want to focus on most in this presentation today is how you can enable your end users to be more productive. When we talk about productivity, it's honestly the thing Windows is meant to provide, right? We start with security, we start with data governance, but improving productivity of end users is the primary goal of AI. It's what we are trying to do because saving even just a little bit of time for each employee has fundamental impacts on both their work-life balance as well as in the bottom line of what you're able to create. Two of the ways that we're really investing in this are through M365 and through Windows. Focusing first on M365, there's a variety of things that we make available. The first is Microsoft 365 Copilot Chat. You've probably heard a little bit about this. On the January 15th, we actually rebranded M365 application to be Microsoft 365 Copilot Chat. Now, for anyone who's using Entra ID, you can log into M365 Copilot Chat and your data is instantly protected. It doesn't matter whether you're searching with web or you're searching your work files, uh, your data is protected either way. So even if you're only using the free web version, you're good to go. That data is not coming back to Microsoft. That data is not being used to retrain any models. It is yours. And you can do a lot of really cool things with it, whether it's just the basic questions that you can find, such as those that you're probably using for ChatGPT, you get the same kind of questions. Or if you're doing things like, hey, I want to get another code sample. I used GitHub Copilot. I want to check this for errors. You can also plug it in there and see if you'll get a response. Additionally, you can use agents that are grounded in the web data, which is pretty cool. I actually made an agent last week for onboarding people to my team. You can also still do things like IT management controls. This is really important and is really one of the things we are grounding ourselves in is how can we make sure that you as an IT admin feel in control? So you as an IT admin can choose whether or not to deploy the Microsoft 365 Copilot chat app to devices or not. It is an application, so you can manage it the same way as any other application to have it either on the device or fully removed from the device to ensure you can manage that for your users. You can also manage things within the application itself, such as make Copilot available or not have Copilot be available and restrict what they have access to. And so this is super important to make sure that you are always in control 
of these AI developments and improvements that we're making available. Obviously, if you get M365 Copilot, you get a whole lot of additional value and things. The biggest ones that you really get are connection to your work resources, in my opinion. This is because you go from being able to just search web data to being able to search resources across your tenant boundary or within your own organization. This instantly unblocks you having access to things like your SharePoint, your PowerPoints, your Word documents, and really be able to make agents that are much more prescriptive and productive to maybe internal content that isn't publicly available. A good example of this is for us, if I was training a, an agent to answer onboarding questions, on the web data, it'd probably just be okay versus by training on our internal SharePoint and our OSG Wiki site that talks through all the acronyms, I'm able to give a lot better experience to anyone who might be querying that chat bot. Additionally, you get the Copilot in the different M365 products, enabling you to do things like rewrite Word documents or get the notes from a Teams meeting. Probably the most used feature, at least I know for us, is record the meeting and automatically generate Teams notes. It saves a lot of time and they're great to be able to send out afterwards. Now, it's not just M365 where we're giving you different AI value. For Windows devices themselves, we also have a whole set of features that are built into the devices to enable you to be more productive and more secure. Now, you heard me mention at the beginning that security is at the core of every AI that we build and every platform. It's also at the core of every device that we're building. Copilot Plus PCs were built to be the most secure devices. And this actually starts at the silicon and device design itself. All Copilot Plus PCs come with a fingerprint or a camera that enables you to do Windows Hello Enhanced Sign-In Security, or ESS. And this is crucial not just to protect your device and make sure that your login is more secure, but also for protecting your data for features like recall, where if you choose to enable it for your organization, all of that encrypted stored data is also locked behind unencryption via ESS. And so this is a very secure protocol that's put in place to protect your login and your data. Additionally, secured core PCs combine hardware, software, firmware defenses, all to protect against advanced threats. And there's no time that's been more important to protect against many of these things than today, when we're seeing the security landscape evolve very quickly and more threats against devices and software than ever. Finally, Microsoft Pluton is a chip to cloud secure technology that was built with zero trust principles in mind. And these three security improvements are all built into Copilot Plus PCs and all on by default. Now they're also available on select hardware. So please speak with your OEM, device sales partner, or carefully review specs of any new devices you're buying that are not Copilot Plus PCs to ensure you're getting these latest security improvements. In terms of accessibility, this is something we're also working to continually improve through AI. On Windows 11 in general, we do provide a great set of different accessibility features, whether that is things like live captions or different ways that you can set your screen mode to make it more accessible. With Copilot Plus PCs, we actually are providing even further things like live translations, image reading and narrator, and automatically generated alt text to ensure that users who maybe have low to no vision can have photos automatically described for them, even if the user who sent it didn't take the time to remember to add an alt text to the file. In terms of other productivity improvements, we're adding things such as improved Windows search, which is probably my favorite, because it enables you to search not just in a way that's lexically comparing character to character, but is in fact semantically searching across the different file sets. What this means is instead of searching for, I don't know, Copilot Plus PC um, in a very explicit sense, uh, where it has to only find every file where I explicitly said Copilot Plus PC, I can now search for device or next generation of devices. And I would still find all of those same files. And I would find any photos of a file that maybe would have said Copilot Plus PC or would have shown those devices because it's searching for things that might have similar context rather than just things that are lexically accurate. We're also going to be introducing recall, which for, again, the control and transparency is something we're really trying to improve here. 
And so recall will be off by default for all commercial devices. Not only that, but it's removed from the device unless you, the IT admin, choose to go and enable it for commercial organizations. While this is a huge productivity tool and we have done a lot of advancements in terms of how the data is kept secure, we know that you will need to test it out in your organization, evaluate it, and review the cost benefit analysis of are the risks that are potentially there worth the trade-offs for your organization. Additionally, we're having click to do, live captions, live translations, and Windows Studio effects, many of which are already available, whether in Windows Insider program or in retail today. I highly recommend in your organization that you get a Copilot Plus PC or a set of them within your organization to start testing out these features. This really is just the set that Microsoft has built. There's also more features that our ISV partners have actually went out and built as well. And as discussed previously, you as an organization can build your own features on top of the neural processing units within the Copilot Plus PCs to take the best advantage of these devices. Now, let's look at how you can use these tools in practice together. Whenever we're thinking about Microsoft AI offerings for commercial, it can be really confusing to understand what to buy or where to go or what I should be investing in. I know you probably have heard the word co-pilot way too many times and not been sure what exactly it meant or what exactly it meant you should purchase to get that specific feature. The two previously shared slides are meant to be a little bit of a cheat sheet to help you understand what you need to get access to the different capabilities that are available. And this slide is meant as a summary of our AI offerings to help it make it clear for you how you should best invest to set your company up for success and have the best productivity benefits, accessibility benefits, and security benefits to meet your organization's needs. Obviously, you'll get the most value by having both an M365 Copilot subscription and a Copilot Plus PC, because you'll get the full set of things that we have available from Copilot chat to summarize and rewrite for all M365 products to local ability to actually summarize and rewrite for Outlook to improved video resolution when talking with someone on low bandwidth in Teams and a variety of new features that are still being developed. That said, depending on your needs, you might be totally fine to get away with optimizing for just the new Windows features in the Copilot Plus PCs, such as improved Windows search, enhanced studio effects, and recall, which allows you to actually reopen or copy documents that you previously had had in a Word, PowerPoint, et cetera. Or you might say that you really just need the M365 Copilot because you're optimizing for the summarization and rewrite capabilities or the automatic meeting note generations. It really depends on what you as an organization need to best take advantage of the different productivity gains. And really for these things in AI in general, we're just at the beginning. It's really just starting now. And so the question is, what platforms do you want to get on to set yourself up for success? For those of you who have devices you're going to refresh as Windows 10 goes end of life, I highly recommend looking at Copilot Plus PCs and devices with a neural processing unit of at least 40 trillion operations per second or 40 tops. This is super important to make sure that you're set up to leverage not only the features that we've talked about today, but all of the new features that are going to be coming over the next few years. We are also providing a set of resources and references that you can use to understand how to guest leverage Copilot Plus, M365 Copilot, Azure AI Services, GitHub Copilot, and more. By the way, if you're wondering about the productivity benefits that some of these can provide, I will tell you that this presentation was made in less than 20 minutes, in large part thanks to the help of M365 Copilot and the ability to synthesize across different PowerPoint and Word documents on these topics. With that, I hope that this has helped you better understand the different Microsoft AI products available and how they can be used to help your organization take advantage of this next generation of features, capabilities, and devices. Have a great day.